How you doing, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you so much for tuning in to the 112th edition <clears throat> of the MMA Podcast, a special Thanksgiving edition of the MMA Podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, we got a lot to break down. This past weekend, we had UFC Fight Night, Edgar versus Swanson in Austin, Texas, the home of the word on the street. We got Ramses here on the line. He was on the front lines. We'll talk about UFC Austin, uh, Frankie Edgar and Cub Swanson fighting in the main event. We'll also talk a little bit about Metamorph. Is five. Talk about Conor McGregor, where he is in line at a featherweight title shot. Talk about Rampage, maybe coming back to the UFC, a possible fight in 2015 between Dillashaw and Cruz. Happy Thanksgiving, people. Let's do it. to the MMA Podcast. <laughs> thank you, Lenny Hart. Thank you, Eddie Bravo and Smoke Serpent for that intro. And thank you for tuning in to, like I said, a very uh, a special Thanksgiving edition of the MMA Podcast. It's not Thanksgiving, but uh, it is the day before Thanksgiving. It's super late. It's even uh, all already almost midnight here in uh, Denver. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, uh, I went Thanksgiving grocery shopping, which took about an hour and a half. I'm looking for bullshit like, uh, like powdered mustard, uh, water chestnuts. What the fuck? I'm uh, trying to do, do it up though, though people. Um, as always, we are joined by a, a couple of friends, uh, going to talk a little MMA. We're going to talk, talk a little, uh, turkey. A little bit of Thanksgiving. Who the fuck knows? It's probably going to get ridiculous as always. Um, all the way in Guam. This dude is literally in the future. It's like 5 p.m. on Wednesday over there. It's late as shit. He, he's in the future. He's Davey Boy on Twitter. D-A-V-E-I underscore B-O-I. Dave, what's going on, man? Hey, not much, Jake. Uh, thanks for having me on the show. Um, other than that, uh, the only thing I really got to say is uh, for all you people that were in Ferguson that was a part of those riots, y'all should be ashamed of yourselves. That's right. It's a hot take. We're talking current events, people. Um, and uh, also, Ramsey's. He's on the word on the street. He's always got hot takes, like I said, coming in from Austin, Texas, on Twitter at the Aunt Jimmy Show. What's going on, dude? What's up, Jake, from the MMA podcast? A lot of people thought it was all over for me. They had me figured for dead. But I'm back, people, and I'm still bringing you the word on the street. The Aunt Jimmy Show on Twitter. Thank you. And and um, I uh, believe we might actually be doing a Thanksgiving night edition of the Word on the Street, where uh, you're uh, finally going to release some details of this uh, of this court court case the Feds are throwing at you for the Word on the Street uh, copyright ownership with. Sesame Street, I don't know, it's uh, it's getting pretty intense. Yeah, man, a lot of people are, you know, when they find out that you're doing something successful in life, you're climbing to the top, a lot of people in the in the bottom of the bucket try to drag you back down. And that's and that's uh when when you got to turn it up. You you got to see that's that's the personal protest that we all have to go through in our lives, man. The other people trying to bring you down, you have to rise above it. You got to rise above the nonsense. Like like me not knowing even what the hell I'm talking about anymore. Word on the street. <laughs> That's right. And if you want to be a part of the madness that is the MMA Podcast, you can call us. Uh, we are on Skype at the MMA Podcast. The phone number is 213-457-3380. Or as always, you can tweet us at the MMA Podcast if you don't feel like chatting. And uh, yeah, you know, if you you want to talk UFC Austin, you want to thank you uh, want want to talk about Thanksgiving, crazy memories of your family getting shit house wasted. Which I'm Irish, I have plenty of those. Um, yeah, fucking uh, call us, let us know. But as always, we're gonna start breaking down last week's card, which was UFC Austin in uh, Ramses's backyard at the Irwin Center this past Saturday, November twenty second. And uh, yeah, let's uh, let's 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 start with the uh, 
prelims, we uh, kicked off with the uh, Korean Duho Choi, the Korean Superboy. Um, a very highly touted prospect, and the guy goes out and knocks out Juan Manuel Puig in 18 seconds. So it was his first fight in the UFC. Expect him to get a uh, maybe not, you know, a high level opponent because this is only going to be his second fight, but definitely a step up after absolutely clobbering Juan Puig. Um, we also had a women's strawweight bout between uh, the gorgeous and illustrious. Paige Van Zant taking on the also gorgeous and also illustrious Caitlin Curran. Uh, Paige winning it via TKO in the third round. Paige was actually um, su- supposed to be in this past um, season of The Ultimate Fighter, Tough 20. But uh, she is 20, so she was not allowed to compete because at the Tough House, they drink alcohol and she's underage, so she can't be in a house with a bunch of booze, which it blows my mind that if you're going to be on Tough, like the, like this is a six weeks that can make or break your entire life if your life is your fighting career and you have people pretty much every season who drink a shitload and make asses of of them themselves like like dude i'm an alcoholic but if i had to take six weeks off for tough i would take the six weeks off i wouldn't be like hitting it hard hitting the bottle hard every night in 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 the tough house but that's a whole nother issue um we then transition wait wait, hang on I, yeah. I do want to say something about this if I could. Jake, they need to the allow MMA weed podcast. in the house. Yeah. Well, uh, obviously they do. Uh, you didn't get that from me, though. That's just a word on the street. See how that works? <laughs> I shield myself. <laughs> anyway, uh, what? Uh, um, yeah, the she wasn't. Paige Van Zandt wasn't allowed to be on Tough because of the alcohol in the house. See that that doesn't make any fucking sense to me. Like what, what is the law cited here? Uh, because like you're telling me if you're 18 and you go away to college, you, your room, you can't get, uh, you can't rent a room with, if your roommates have alcohol in the house. What, you know what I mean? Like, what is this law? I've never heard of. This. I, don't I don't know if it's a even law. Works. It's probably more of a precaution than it is a law because I would assume, you know, like <clears throat> you have the folks there filming it, but I don't know if you necessarily have producers there on site all the time, and I don't know if you want to give the cameramen the ability to like stop people from drinking. I mean, their 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 fear is that that van 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 zant will have a beer or two and maybe not even get ridiculous but at the same time like she might tell a friend she drank at the tough house and it might get get out or 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 you know a, a picture might might be be taken who the fuck knows but i think the Fair ufc enough, that makes sense. is just very afraid of like say say there's some some shot and the camp camera pans and you see for like a split second that she's holding a beer then zoof is going to be in all sorts of fucking bullshit they already pay pay their put their fighter shit they aren't trying to lose money to some bs underage drinking charge it makes sense they're just uh, i just don't like that like it's being presented as if like this was some sort of legal matter um yeah just pr well, yeah, it, I mean, it is the the UFC, and if you've followed their sort of PR, like the UFC has a very interesting PR structure. They regularly like that use they yeah yeah that's that's a whole <laughs> fucking another story. Yeah, <laughs> but um yeah yeah the the UFC's PR setup is interesting in two ways. A because all the people that that are quote unquote at the top, like like in other sports, reporters aren't as married to the NFL or NBA, etc., as MMA re- reporters are to the uh, UFC. I mean, it's sad, but the top guys who the UFC allows in to do interviews and do do pressers are the guys that kiss Dana's ass the hardest. And if you have a re- reporter who maybe isn't even talking shit, but is just bringing up negative facts, you know, we'll, we'll write an unbiased story about fighter pay, just bring up topics the UFC doesn't want brought up. Well, uh, 
sorry, you're not getting a press cr- credential for the next event. And we've seen it happen to tons of guys. Uh, Gross, Hel- Helwani was blacklisted for a little while. Just a ton of guys have gotten blacklisted for just saying the wrong thing. Um, it's interesting in that area. It's also interesting in that... Um, the UFC will straight outright lie to people regularly, and then when like they're caught caught up with it, they just blow it off. Yeah, yeah. Like just a week ago, a fucking week ago, it was like this huge presser in Vegas, and they brought a fuckload of media and fourteen of the best fighters in the world, flew them all out, and there was gonna be this giant announcement. Everyone, stay tuned because we've got this huge announcement, touting it for fucking weeks, and instead of coming out and saying that the announcement got canceled. We didn't find out until someone had to fucking ask Dana. I think it was Heidi Fang, which she is actually one of the few. Yeah, Heidi, Adam Martin, Crooklyn. You have a few few folks who, who, who I think still have some journalistic in, integrity. But so many of those guys are so far up the ass of Dana and Zufa and Lorenzo. But um. Yeah, Fang, Fang asked, so what is this giant announcement? And Dana's like, oh yeah, it's not ready yet, sorry. <laughs> and moves on, like we aren't even supposed to, li- like, oh, true, so the reason probably half of the people are watching this <clears throat> is just like a lie, and it's not ready yet, and maybe you thought it would be be ready, which to me it had to have been GSP coming back. But, um, I don't know, it's just, uh, it's just funny yeah. how... Sorry. No, I, I I'm sorry. I, I was just saying, whoa, man. I, I, you're, you're spitting some hot fire at the UFC and Dana right now, dude. Yeah. And I'm, I would just like to. State I'm never gonna that, get a press credential. <laughs> I, I just like to state that uh, I believe in the UFC and its product and in, in its president, and uh, I honestly like. I just Jake tweeted me today and was like, "Hey, I have a podcast. W- would you be on it?" And I was like, "All right, I don't know you, but." All right, and here I am, and uh, I don't have anything to do with this. Um, the UFC is the, the greatest fight promotion in, on the entire planet. <laughs> and Dana White is a, oh, very, Jesus. a very decent and nice man and father and, and, and fam, family guy. And that, like that's how, the bottom line. I like how it yeah, all the it show. <laughs> I I like how all the embedded shows, like even the ones where they're like in Vegas, where Dana and his family live, Dana's like out out at the casino playing Jack or black blackjack until four in the morning. Like he never ever <laughs> ever mentions anything about his family, which I guess maybe it's a privacy thing. Rogan's the same 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 way. Like on on his his show, if the chat starts to move toward his family, he very very hey, quickly he, brushes it away. In his defense, it, there was one episode of Embedded where <laughs> I where he Embedded. did where right where it did show uh his his family. He was like giving his kid a little cake or whatever and of course, you know, you using him for PR, but but still it was it was it was Yeah, a but their faces were was, blurred out. Right. And then uh, I believe later <laughs> on in that same episode he he, he Let got, that be a fucking fire's children. He got man. drunk. Yeah, just... Mr. Dana White got drunk and purchased a smart car. <laughs> That's right. That was an awesome episode. That was wasn't that that the one where he was in like Maine? He's just like, yeah, fucking, I'm just gonna buy a car because I'm drunk. Yeah, he was visiting. He was spending time with his family, and uh, I don't know. Maybe the kid came with him to the bar too. I don't know. They blurred it. They He's blurred a family all their man. faces out. Shout out, word on the street. Um, yeah, let's let's move on and try and get back on track. UFC Austin. Um, we uh, talked about the f- the fight pass fights. Um, also four prelim fights on Fox Sports One. We had uh, Ramsey's your boy, Eves Edwards from Austin, Texas. Unfortunately, losing in his backyard to Akbar Ariola via armbar. Uh, subbed out a minute fifty two into the first round. James Vick, uh, piecing up Nick Hine, winning the unanimous judges nod. Roger Navarez winning a close, close fight over Team Dark Side Zone. Luke Bar- Barnett, a lot of folks were calling it a robbery. Um, in a sense, it was because I scored the fight 29-28 for Luke, and I think most people did. But in a fight that's 2-1, to one, and it's close, 
I mean, if it goes to a split, it's anyone's fight. So I'm, you know, it it uh, sucks for him, but he's got got talent. I don't think he's he's close to uh, being cut or or anything. He uh, signed a nice con contract with the UFC a year or two ago, so I'm not too worried about him. I'm I'm sure he'll get back in the win column soon. Um, in the final fight before we got over to the main card, Ruslan Magomedov defeating Josh Copeland, uh, pretty one sided unanimous decision there. Uh, Davy, I'll throw to you first of the prelim fights what did you take out of it i'm uh, sure for uh, a lot of folks listeners the page van van zant fight was pretty memorable i would say uh, out of all those i mean the mo- yeah actually the most memorable was probably the page van zant fight i'm um the the korean superboy doing uh doing a knockout in the prelims i mean that was pretty cool but uh didn't really uh throw that spark i mean afterwards James Vick, uh, the James Vick fight, I was disappointed with. I mean, I was happy to see James Vick win, but uh, it was that was a boring fight to me. Um, Luke Barnett against <clears throat> Luke Barnett's fight, did I think it was? Did I think it was a robbery? <sighs> Unfortunately, I mean, I want I want to say no, no one says. I, I think I, I agree with you too, Jake. I think it could have gone either way. I seen I seen uh, Navarra. Yeah, Navarra. I think he he won that third round decisively. You know, rounds one and two. It it could have gone either way. Robbery in a sense. I mean, if it goes to a split decision, you know, it could go it could go any way. Uh, but other than that, I mean, obviously it was the debut of Paige Van Zant, and uh, she uh, she did her thing. Yeah, man. Um, first off, I'm I'm very appreciative of the fact that the UFC came to my hometown my city of austin texas and uh it, it was a pleasure um the Irwin center the staff the uh everybody everybody was was great they were humble how was they the private suite back to me the private suite was great dude it was a it was a sweet deal <laughs> and um good view <laughs> Service was excellent, except they brought the caviar out a little bit or uh, too early. Um, but other than, uh, other than that, like it, it was fine. It only ran me ten grand, um, and I lost more than that betting because uh, everybody I backed uh, was horribly raped by the judges, or um, unfortunately, I, I guess I, I don't know if we'll get to it now or later the eve edwards fight was particularly now, tragic yeah. yeah um uh the, the, real quick the prelims were excellent um got the blood flowing of course page van zandt very impressive i'll talk about that a little bit later don't worry though um but yeah seeing the hometown hero eve edwards my thug jitsu master the man who gave me my black belt uh seeing seeing what what happened at the fight here um it, it was sad, but at the same time, you guys don't know the full story. Uh, the night before the fights, Eves actually was warming up, and um, he straight up broke his neck. And uh, but he still he wasn't gonna back out. Not for not he wasn't gonna disappoint the city of Austin. So he showed up the next day, and uh, he f- he he fought. He fought that man with a broken neck, and that's the bottom line. That is the word on the streets of Austin. Uh, it was a damn tragedy. I, Isaac Valley Flag was also robbed by the judges, I have to say. I had him winning that fight. Uh, just watch it again, and, and you know, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty clear if it were you know, on the streets who won. It was that kind of deal, uh, but he was robbed by the judges. And so was my man Luke Barnett. Um, he was horribly raped uh, in my city, and I do apologize on behalf of Austin, Texas, to those Just like gentlemen. that one rapist that Alan caught. Exactly. The, the they they were dragged in the ditch right by the right by Lady Bird Lake. If you know what I'm saying. If you live in if you live in ATX, shout out what what uh, shout out to the five one twos. Um, but yeah, uh, robberies all left and right, uh, cost me a lot of money. Um, it, there was hometown cooking. I mean, it was the Texas guys that robbed Ike and big slow, uh, Luke. Um, 
you know, and I'm sorry. I, I just want to reassure everybody out there who also got robbed along with these gentlemen that um, it is my city. I do take partial responsibility and uh, I'm, I'm close to tracking down exactly who was responsible for uh, what, what happened with the judging. And that's all I can say about that right now. But it was fun. It was great watching the fights here in my hometown. Even though my dudes lost, you still got to be happy anytime the UFC comes into town. Thank you, Dana White. Even though he ducked me, he didn't show up. Didn't show up, neither did Lorenzo, man. Uh, I was disappointed in that. Uh, Rogan, of course, he ain't going to show up. I, I'm exposing the fact that he died three years ago. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Anyway, I've been rambling. Word on the street. Wait. If Joe Rogan died three years ago, then what are we seeing now? What what is what is announcing UFC fights? I mean, is they found a dude that looks exactly like Joe Rogan, and and, and they you know they mix that down to sound like him, even on the podcast. That's why they fired. Uh, that's why Red Band doesn't do the show anymore. It's got to be this new computer guy from Raytheon, but. <laughs> But I mean, come on! Like he just all wow. of a sudden, it, it was it, you knew he was dead. It was when he went full bald when he tapped out to baldness. Remember that? Yeah. That's when they. That's when they had to. He, he was already dead, and like they brought in a dude. This is just the internet conspiracy theory, all right? I'm just, you know, I'm just saying what I know, uh, what I heard. I mean, um, yeah, they brought in a dude that only looks exactly like him when he's bald. So, of course, Joe Rogan's got to be bald now. And uh, just just look it up, people. Google it. Joe Rogan died three years ago. Hashtag, bitches. Word on the street. And we'll uh, try and transition in the main card after that, which uh, started with that Matt Wyman-Isaac Valley flag fight, a fight that Wyman uh, won U- unanimously uh two judges scored at 30 to 27 which i thought was kind of crazy i don't think wyman won all three rounds we had a flyweight fight where benavidez joseph benavidez your perennial number two at flyweights beat dustin or ortiz even though it was 30 to 27 across the board i think um i think that's kind of misleading. I think we expected more out of Joe. I think Dustin looked better than a lot of folks th- thought he would. Uh, we had a heavyweight fight between Alexi Olnick and Jared Rocheholt. Olnick winning uh, 3 minutes 21 seconds into the f- first round via KO due to punches. Um, which, I mean, it's a fight at 265 pounds. You're probably going to see a finish in the first couple rounds. You see the most finishes at that weight class. Uh, you see the least finishes in the flyweight uh, weight class where we saw another decision like the Benavidez-Ortiz one where uh, Chico Camus, the big underdog, actually won a split decision over Brad Pickett. Another fight that a lot of folks were calling a uh, robbery uh, was very odd. Two judges scored at 29-28 for uh, Camus, one judge scoring at 30-27 to for Brad Pickett. And in the co-main event, Edson Barboza upsetting Bobby Green, um, <clears throat> which was not a robbery or a controversy at all. Bar- <clears throat> uh, pardon me. <clears throat> a little bit of indigestion. Uh, we had a unanimous judges nod there, 30 to 27 across the board. You know, I mean, Bobby Green, I, I tweeted before the fact that I thought Green deserved a better opponent because he just defeated the number one lightweight and Josh Thompson and he was awarded with the number 11 lightweight and Edson Barboza what um I thought green I I I don't know green I don't know what green was doing as far as as far as his game plan I think he uh really could have used this wrestling a lot more Edson was really smart you know he moved around a lot um green and fans of green have have called Ed Edson a runner, uh, sort of like we saw Condit do against Diaz. 
I mean, it is a strategy, and you can't blame these folks for wanting to win. But uh, I don't know. It's it's not very entertaining when you're seeing a guy just pretty much try and run from an advancing opponent for 15 minutes, just trying to sneak in little shots here and there, and then jumping away. Uh, it doesn't make for a very fun fight. We'll save the Edgar Swanson fight as its own topic. But uh, Dave, I'll throw to you first. What did you make of these uh, five fights on the main card? Four decisions and a KO by Olnick. Um, it, it was boring. Uh, yeah. I got to say it like that. It, it was boring. Um, I mean, the people I wanted to win, I mean, they, they didn't win in, but I just wish it would have been a little bit more entertaining. I actually like uh, Matt Wyman because of his nickname, Handsome Matt Wyman. I think it's just a funny nickname, and I think he's actually, you know, he's a grinder, and, uh, you know, he, he goes for the win. I like the fact that, like, he was the only man – that uh, didn't have any sponsors on any of his fight shorts. He just had the UFC logo on his fight shorts for whatever reason. He, he doesn't want to want to be sponsored by anybody. But uh, I actually find it kind of shocking that there was a 30-27 decision, you know, in there. Um, I thought the fight I, – I, th- I didn't think it was going to be a 30-27. I thought, you know, maybe 29-28. But uh, Joseph Benavides gets Dustin Ortiz. Um, I was more shocked, actually, that – Ben, uh, Joe Jitsu was actually before Brad Pickett and Chico Camus. You talk about the number two flyweight. Yeah. Um, yeah. You talk, you talk about the number two flyweight, you know, and you have them second, you know, leading into the main event. And then you have Brad Pickett against Chico Camus. Why? You know, that's, that's w- awesome promoting, you know, your number two guy. You know, you don't know if, you don't know who, 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 uh, if Doss is, John Doss is going to be coming back anytime soon, you know, you don't, you really don't know if who uh, Mighty Mouse is really going to be fighting. And, but at the same notion, though, you have your number two, you basically your number two guy fighting second. Way to go on that one, UFC. Um, Jared Rolshoff, I was actually, I was actually off of that one. I thought Rolshoff was gonna um, was gonna win, and he he actually got obliterated. Uh, by a knockout, which I thought was which I thought was like a a cringer on that one. Chico Camus against Brad Pickett, though. Um, I do like Brad Pickett, but him, him in the flyweight division to see if like you know he could get a string of wins because he couldn't do it at 135. Doesn't look like it's really happening for you there, uh, there, buddy. Um, Chico Camus though winning. I know uh, Allen. <laughs> hates the fuck out of Chico Camus, but I'll just say, Alan, if you're listening, I was so happy that Chico Camus uh, won that fight. Uh, Edson Barbosa against Bobby Green, that was, it's not, it's not the same thing, you know, it's not the same fight as him going up against Josh Thompson, unfortunately, you know, he did the same thing. He just kept talking, you know, let him know, like, oh, you almost hit me. Or, oh, like, it hit me just a little bit, you know. It, it wasn't the same. And Barboza just uh, just swarmed on him, and uh, and he got the nod for it. And I think Barboza, you know, I think, I think he's a little underrated. I think he uh, he's finally realizing, you know, what he can do or what he can't do and stuff. And, uh, you know, his head's in the right game. But other than that, it's – unfortunately, I think the fights were boring. Hmm. Well, I don't know what you were watching then, son. I was excited to start to finish. Yes, I, I am a little biased, of course. It was in Austin, Texas. Can't Besides that. Enough. Best city in the South, hands down. The pride and joy of the best city in Texas. It goes without saying. No one's even argued against that. Anyway, um, yeah, the uh, main card fights, uh, of course, it kicked off with Valley Flag. Uh, getting robbed. I mean, Wyman, I, 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 I didn't see it. I'm sorry. But, uh, yeah, Valley Flag, dude, I, Ike will be back, man. I, I, I stand with Ike. Um, he won me over. I, I, did, I, I wanted to hate the, that gentleman because he did fight Eve Edwards and decisioned him out. And what I, I always view, will always view as a complete uh, draw. But anyway, um, that was a sad fight to watch. But uh, of course, my man Joey Joey Jiu Jitsu Benavidez he actually made up for it in the next fight, winning. He was my only pick that actually 
fucking won that night. Um, but he, uh, I mean, he did it in a glorious fashion, of course. He did duck me. Um, he, I was supposed to, you know, on the. I'm talking about the purchase of Megan O'Leary's dog. Uh, they both ducked me. But, you know, at least Joe had an excuse. He had a fucking fight. And, you know, his, his head ain't in, you know, selling dogs. But Megan O'Leary, um, she, uh, she's, she's on my shit list right now. And if you listen, Megan, um, you got to make it right. A deal's a deal. And one way or another, Be- Benny will be mine. And, um, yeah. DM me or something. We got to work this out. Uh, Benny, Benny's going to be happier with me. And uh, Roshad Olenek, don't even remember it, but, you know, it's like every other heavyweight fight. You're just going to watch these two lummoxes. Someone's going to get knocked out. Great times. Pickett versus Camus. Meh, a little filler fight. Uh, you know, time to get your... Time to get, I, I guess, the plebeians, like, they got their hot dogs and beers or whatever uh, for the while the picket canvas fight went down. But me, I just ordered another round of uh, fresh caviar on ice. Nice little beluga, little beluga remix. Delicious. Um, Hell yeah. And Bobby Green versus Barbosa. Barbosa. Uh, that was that was the most retarded fight of the night. <laughs> uh, what the hell were you doing, Bobby Green? He was, he had his, he had his hands down. He was just, he was dare, he was fucking daring Barboza to take his fucking head off. Yeah, it's, I, and he I was only, landing some clean shots too. Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, Bobby Green didn't go out or anything like that. But still, he was not intelligently defending himself at times. He was acting a stone fool. As far as I can figure, uh, Bobby Green, he, he was like doing his best imitation like of Mike Brown. Just wanted, he wanted to die. How's that for a fucking hot take? Word on the street. Word on the damn street. Um, that leaves us with one fight. Edgar versus... Swanson, I almost said Maynard, what the fuck, too much weed people, uh, Edgar versus Swanson, but first, we gotta give you the stat of the day. Stat of the day! Stat of the day! Stat of the day! Stat of the day! Here comes the stat of the day! Frankie Edgar and Cub Swanson, it was the latest stoppage in UFC history, with only four seconds remaining in the fight, in the five round fight, Frankie Edgar neck crank subs out Cub Swanson, 24 minutes, 56 seconds. Shout out to Jamie Josta, Patrick C. O'Connor, and the Dan Patrick Show for that one. Um, and not only does Frankie get the latest stoppage in UFC history, but I think he's uh, I think he's one fight away from uh, have, having the most time in the octagon of all time. Currently, he's third behind uh, one of my favorite fighters, BJ Penn, one of my least favorite fighters, George St. Pierre. But uh, yeah, he's 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 a UFC Hall of Famer for sure. And let's break down the fights uh, before we get to the news and open up the phone lines. Um, Frankie Edgar defeating Cub Swanson. Where does this put, um, should Frankie get the next title shot at Aldo? Uh, and what did you, you, you think of it? You know, I, man, part of me thought that Frankie was going to do very well, but, uh, Cub, dude, Cub, Cub was on an awesome streak. Cub had won six fights in a row. And, and a lot of those were against decent opponents. Charles Oliveira, Dustin Poyer, Jeremy Stevens. Uh, Frankie Edgar is just at another level though. Wins the fight, four seconds left in Austin, Texas. Latest stoppage ever. What did you think of the fight, and what do you think about Edgar? Well, um, oh, and and um, also, I did want to make a note. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, yeah. with great great sadness I have to uh, say I'm seeing on Twitter apparently a giant meteor hit the island of Guam. Dave dropped off the call. We can only oh. assume he's dead. 
Um, if you want to follow be. the Twitter that used to belong to him, it's at DaveyBoy, D-A-V-E-I underscore B-O-I. Uh, follow him just out of respect in memoriam. R.I.P. Davy Boy. But uh, go ahead with Edgar Swanson. We hardly knew you, Davey. Um, yeah, Edgar Swanson, man. Frankie Edgar, of course, after that fight, he is now Frankie the Blanky. Um, I was shocked at what happened. I had I had Cub Swanson winning. I didn't bet it, but I had Cub Swanson winning in my mind. Um, I just I just didn't count on Frankie Edgar somehow, and I'm not accusing him of anything. I'm just saying he's somehow out of nowhere. This little guy had superhuman strength. Ragdoll and Cubs once and taking him down at will. Uh, I don't know. And looking like he was in the best shape of his life. Frankie, man, you, you made it. You made the deal. You know, he's dancing with the devil people. That's all I'm going to say about that. Um, but congratulations, I guess. But title shot. Nah, get out of here. We're we're done with Frankie Edgar being champ. Uh, he didn't, and and honestly, he didn't move too many pay per views. Let's let's be real, people. He was always, he was just like banking off of like grudge rematches for most of his uh, reign. And uh, what, what what did he fight? BJ seven or eight times? It got ridiculous. It got ridiculous in eye rolling like fashion, just like this fight. Every time. By the end of it, every time he was taking Cubs Swanson down, we were rolling our eyes just watching this. Everybody in the crowd, uh, everyone at home. Let's be real here. It was a boring fight, but people are trying to make make this out to be Frankie's second coming or some shit. Uh, no, I think it was. I think it was a terrible fight. Something was up with Cubs Swanson. And uh, Frankie, man, I, I just don't n- know. No, everyone knows that Conor McGregor is going to get the next shot. Uh, so I don't even know why Frankie's even trying to kid himself. Um, but <sighs> I guess it was worth watching. I, I doubt I will ever watch the fight again, though. Um, there was some other point about it that was odd. But I can't recall at this time, so I will hand the mic back over to you, Mr. Jake. I'm just really rattled by the uh, sudden and, and the shocking news yeah. of Davy Spears' death. <clears throat> yeah, rest in peace, Davy boy. Um, <clears throat> really quickly before we get to the news and open up the phone lines, you did bring up Conor McGregor. You think he's going to get the next shot next because Ricardo Lamas is calling him out, saying he needs to fight a wrestler before he gets a title shot. But um, <clears throat> I don't know. The UFC seems to, business wise, know that you got to strike while the iron is hot. Frankie's already gotten a shot. Conor, that iron is red hot. Does Conor get the next shot against Joe, Jose Aldo in a soccer stadium in Ireland? Unless he somehow breaks his back and ends up paralyzed in a wheelchair, <laughs> Conor McGregor will get the next title shot against Jose Aldo. The UFC has literally, and this is announced, I'm not just making it up or joking, the UFC has literally already booked the stadium in Ireland. Uh, for an event, okay? They already booked it, all right? It's going to happen. In fact, if Connor wanted to, he could take a fight right now before that goes down. He could fucking lose, and he'd still get the title shot. And and if you don't believe me, like, I don't know what to tell you. That is a 100% shoot coming from me. That's the truth. That is the word on the street. You think Connor's got a shot against Aldo? I do. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna make Aldo take the dive, or they're gonna poison <laughs> wow. him. They're gonna poison him. Jesus Christ! What you think? You think Connor's gonna lose in Ireland in a fucking sold out stadium? Uh, no, uh, to a guy that can't even speak English and promote his next fight. I'm sorry, like that. This will not even be close. You'll see Jose Aldo show up and he'll be he'll be throwing like punches that are more off 
than what Stefan Bonner was throwing at Tito Ortiz and Bellator last week. That's the goddamn truth, and you all know it. And I think a lot of folks would agree that the UFC probably will put Connor in front because they know that the Connor fight is a lot more marketable. But do you think that uh, that Frankie's getting screwed over? Because Frankie has arguably done more since losing to Aldo than Connor has in his current run. No, he's not really getting screwed. I mean, like he he already had his reign. I mean, he was you champion. Think he ever gets a belt back. He had his day in the sun. Um, no, not unless it's a damn miracle, and or like he does something to like put himself over, like to like new fans somehow. Um, but nah, man, this guy. It, honestly, he had his shot. He had his reign. It was a day in, day in the sun, and I mean, I gotta side with the UFC. You've got to. You know, you're running a business at the end of the day. You've got to keep bringing in new blood. I mean, you got to put the new guys over before you start recycle. You can't just you can't recycle guys, especially especially guys that don't move pay per view sales. And I'm sorry, I did no. I don't I don't know anybody that ever bought a Frankie Edgar pay per view, like like not be. Like solely because it was a Frankie Edgar pay per view. I don't know a damn person, neither do you. Word on the street. What the fuck? I have to change it up now, dude. <laughs> what else am I supposed to fucking do? What the fuck? Let's. <laughs> I can't just Let's... keep doing the Vince McMahon. <laughs> Let's get to the news, we've. <laughs> We got a lot of news to break down. Uh, the the uh, first thing I guess we'll get to is Metamorphs Five. Um, oof, I don't think this was good for Metamorphs. A lot like I don't know. It was good they got Rory on. Sakuraba versus Henzo was really awesome to get as a main event. But um, Jesus Christ, and and the phone lines are open. If uh, you want to call in, just chat a little bit. Stay on with us. Fuck it, it doesn't matter. It's Thanksgiving, people. Uh, we are a giant podcast family, and we're opening up the phone lines to the family. If you want to call in, two one three four five seven three three eight zero or Skype us <coughs> at the MMA podcast. But uh, yeah, Metamorphs Five. Um, they charged thirty bucks for it. Every fight went to a draw except for the first one um they put jake shields in a secret match which was kind of perplexing because you think if you're getting jake shields on metamorris you promote it and uh you know get a few extra buys because a lot of people are interested in seeing jake shields roll with somebody um so yeah we didn't know jake shields was on metamorris until he was like literally about to roll um, we saw the, uh, Shields fight, went to a draw, our boy Vinny Magalash fought, I don't know, it was, like, did this guy win a contest to roll with him or some, some shit, that went to a draw, Keenan Cornelius, Cor- Cor- uh, Nelius, uh, was very defensive in a draw against Yuri Samos, uh, Roy McDonald and JT Torres, draw, Kazuki, Sa- Kaz- Kazushi Sakuraba versus Henzo Gracie, draw. These are fights that a lot of times you would see have a points advantage and go to a decision. Whoever has more points wins, but this, but a lot of folks say that that sort of system, a point system, sets up for people to just get into advantageous spots and just sort of ride them and sit on them and win a boring decision like we oftentimes see in MMA. So with Metamorris, it's submission only. You either get the submission or the fights a draw after 20 minutes, and uh, well, pretty much all the fights were draws after 20 minutes. Um, I don't know it was cool seeing the names, but as far as you know, it being a satisfying event, like I don't know if you can really argue it being satisfying when every fucking fight goes to a draw. I don't know, no Ramsey. So what did you think about Metamorphos Five? Well, uh, there were just. Too much going on with UFC Austin. I, of course, uh, could not watch Metamorosa when it went down. 
And also, you, you know, I, I couldn't take the chance that like I'd see um, my Lexi on 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 the screen and then have some sort of panic attack or breakdown. Uh, so I did not watch, but um, your Twitter X. Yeah, God bless her. You know, I, I you get a Twitter girlfriend. Uh, you know, you don't close a deal in person. It's it's not. Eventually, you're gonna have to unfollow. And um, do uh, you all speak anymore, or uh, you you completely not on speaking terms? We're kind of like we're just now starting to talk again, but you know, we all know that we c- we can never be. Anyway, uh, Metamorse, uh, I did submit. Another reason I didn't want to watch, I was a little bummed. I did submit my application to fight Vinny Magalesh um, because he did unfollow me on Twitter without rhyme or reason. Uh, so I was like, all right, I'm going to fucking fight this guy and embarrass him and submit him and take that 10 grand and still hand it over to him after the fight's over, you know, just because I'm a nice guy. All right, yeah, I could have. You know, in that ten grand, like you know, I ended up spending it on the suite at UFC Austin. Um, but yeah, well, I, my application to fight Vinny at Metamorphs was rejected, and instead they went with this guy that obviously was juicing even more than Vinny. Word on the street. Uh, yeah, that guy. That guy was super juiced up, man. Yeah, and, and they, and and then, they uh, don't drug test him, Metamorphs. Mm-mm. Yeah, so why wouldn't you? You'd be stupid if you didn't juice for Meta Morris. Um, but yeah, Roy McDonald definitely didn't juice. He was on the Joe Rogan podcast earlier today, and he was talking about how the dude, um, apparently he got caught in some sort of arm bar, and he was like, yeah, I, I figured the dude was going to break my arm, but I wasn't going to tap. Um, and he said his arm was injured currently and fucked up. Uh, he expects it to go away in a few days. That's what he's hoping for. But um, I guess I'll watch that uh, if it if somebody sends me a link or something. I don't know. Word on the street. That is the word on the street, and it's time for the 10 solid seconds of sports. Where we break down all sports that aren't MMA. Let's do it. Currently, your college football playoff rankings, you got Alabama 1, Oregon, Florida State, and Mississippi State also up there. We got uh, LeBron and the Cavs suck ass. Kobe's even worse. NFL. Hands up, don't shoot. Yeah, wow. <clears throat> Did not hit the post on that 10 solid seconds of sports, but we will keep it rolling on. Um, Rampage Jackson hinting at a return to the UFC. He uh, tweeted out just the thought, but I've learned a big lesson in life and business. Sometimes you should just stay with the devil you know at UFC. Kind of saying, yeah, I was really disenfranchised and disillusioned with the UFC. But then I went to Bellator and they were way worse. So I miss you guys and I want to come back. Um... White said, uh, quote, this, and this is uh, on an interview yesterday on TSN's Off the Record. <clears throat> quote, I like him. Rampage and I have a very unique relationship. All the stuff that goes on publicly, behind the scenes, we square it away. He's a good dude. Um, <clears throat> yeah, you know, we've uh, seen a change in management with Bellator during his uh, time time there. I'm not sure, but uh, actually we do have a caller. Let's, let's add him up. Uh, caller, you're uh, calling from a uh, 818 area code. How would you like to identify yourself and what the fuck is going on? Uh, nothing's going on. Just call me the king. What's up, king? The king. What's going on, king? All right, fuck it. Nothing much. Uh, I just want to talk about how Connor hasn't gotten that damn title shot yet. Everybody wants to get on the Edgar bandwagon. Saying that he deserves a shot just because he beat up, beat the shit out of Cub Swanson, that doesn't mean shit because he beat the shit out of Cub Swanson. That's what he was supposed to do. If he didn't have a good performance, then nobody would be talking about his ass. But I don't know how kind of doesn't have that title shot yet, man. I, I, I don't know what to do. How does this man get it? What What do you say to to folks who uh, say that Connor should fight an elite wrestler first because that is really the only place he hasn't been tested yet? Um, I do believe that he should fight a wrestler as well. I 
<laughs> McGregor, that's a title fight right there. That like that should be after McGregor takes all those titles. But what I'm saying right now is that it's it's not like he hasn't fought a wrestler before. He even got mounted and almost submitted by this guy named Arthur uh, Solinsky or something like that. He took him down, got got mount and almost arm triangled him. He escaped and then not, ended up knocking uh, Solinsky out in the second round. So. It's not like he, he's never been there before or he doesn't know what to do once he gets to the ground. It's just another part of the game that he's only had four fights, so obviously we haven't seen all of what McGregor can do. Yo, so if he fights the uh, champion, Joe, Jose Aldo, he'll, he'll probably be an underdog, but do you think he takes the belt? Um, I am a, a pretty confident guy. I think that uh, McGregor stops Aldo, as a matter of fact, because we see that, you know, Mendes is a wrestler. Let's just not let's not forget that Mendes is a wrestler. I know he's been working with Dwayne Ludwig, and he's a beast, but uh, Mendes dropped him, and he heard him multiple times. If he comes across uh, a light-footed, uh, heavy-handed striker like McGregor and gets hit like Mendes hit him, I don't think that Aldo can... Because I don't even think that Aldo has the finishing ability and him that he used to have, say, five years ago when he was out, you know, uh, killing Cub Swanson in the first 10 seconds. So I don't believe that Aldo even has everything what it takes to beat McGregor. I think the only way that he can beat him is by points, is by just bare, not even like a, a, a decision, but just like barely edging him out or maybe leg kicks and uh, takedown attempts. That's the only way I see Aldo retaining his belt, which is why I want to see McGregor get the title fight first. Yeah. Hey, King, I, I have a question. Um, this is uh, this is Rams this is from Word on the Street, man. Um, do you think that, uh, I mean, the Frankie Edgar fight, what did you really think of Frankie Edgar, man? Because I, I was rolling my eyes at the, it was a boring fucking fight. So you're like, as far as I know, you're a random fan. So I'm just gonna yeah. I'm just gonna ask you. I mean, did you like watching that fight? I, yeah, it was interesting to watch because you thought maybe Cub w- would get up and knock him out. Um, but uh, when I when to see him do that. yeah, like so I mean, this fight did nothing for me, man. Except for the the whenever Cub got back to his feet, that's when you're like, all oh, right, yeah, it's a fight again. Other than that, it was right. bullshit, man. So I'm just wondering if that entertained you. Or... When he stood up, when, whenever he would stand up and, you know, try to egg, egg her on to stand up with him, he would get beat on the feet, and then he would get taken down again, and then he'd just be ground and pounded for the entire round. That yeah. is not an exciting fight. I don't think that has what it takes to get somebody to the title shot. I think, uh, you know, let's, let's, let's look at the facts real quick. You know, Edgar, he, he's been looking good as of late, but who has he fought? He fought... Cub Swanson, which is his best win in the featherweight division, period. And he fought Char- Charlie Oliveira. And then he fought... Who, who was the other guy he just fought? He, oh, my goodness. Gray DJ Maynard. Penn. DJ Penn. Yeah, oh. Gray Man, I'm th- yeah, oh, all, yeah. all, he's he's oh. had a, a legendary career. And Frank Yeager is definitely a beast in his own right. He's had a legendary career. He's fought... Uh, uh, I, I believe DJ was just edging out of his time. When he fought uh, Edgar the first time, yep. but I believe that you know that doesn't make any sense. I I feel like BJ won that fight, but you know it is what it is. Hell and yeah. um, yeah, but it, Edgar's a beast. I know he's a beast. The point is, and I'm trying to stay on topic right now because I'm 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 a little baked. But I uh, think Frankie's on roids, and I'm also baked. But I believe it, man. <laughs> Frankie was juicing, and that was superhuman strength, man. I'm not buying. He it. was. He was. And there's a lot of a funny a funny business going on. I don't think anybody right now is like completely above like uh like cookie cutter. I'm above I don't even think that GSP was clean, to be perfectly honest with you. Oh. But uh I, I do believe I w- if I did see the test and Frankie came back positive, I will not be surprised. The guy is unusually strong and you know, he's around, he's got the mind he's got the wrestler mindset where you'll do literally anything what it takes to win and to be champion again if if uh you know being on roids uh is it, what it takes when if he feels what it takes then that that's what he does but I yeah, think I'm all for it. Connor, it should be legal. 
Well, and then that- Frankie, yet. I- Oh, I was just saying, Roy Sorry, should. I, just... I do believe. I do believe that Roy should be legal, but uh, I'm just saying. I th- I'm pretty damn sure Frankie's on. It ain't a Frankie Edgar hey. fight until his nose is bleeding or broken or both. <laughs> oh yeah, or he gets robbed. <laughs> Apparently, everybody's yeah. saying he gets robbed. He right? You know, you think about it. How good can this man be if he's in so many like? If, I think that before he just before he got into the featherweight division, every single fight it seemed like it was close. Both Greg Mader fights were close. Both Benson Henderson fights were close. Both the Alba fight was close. Everybody keeps saying that he just keeps getting robbed, but you know he's the one that's fighting as close. And nobody says the same shit with Benson. Everybody, yeah. Everybody keeps saying that Benson's robbing everybody. And you know there's some yeah. fights that you can think oh you maybe that he did rob somebody. Uh, possibly like the Josh Thompson fight, but you know it's it's a part of the game. You know if you leave it to the judges, shit might not go your way. Especially if you fight, if it's a close fight, like uh, a close fight like that, shit happens. Yeah, but, you know yeah. it, it's on Edgar to finish fights. Yeah, yo, yo, uh, King, we uh, really appreciate you uh, calling. Um, any other topics you want to break down? Uh, you uh, want to talk talk. Talk turkey, you uh, That's about it, making man. anything dope on Thursday? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> you uh, oh, making yeah, a turkey no, no, no. or anything dope on Thursday, man? It's Thanksgiving. I ain't baking shit. They got me working. Uh, I work oh, around. No. They got me working at, uh, at, for 12 30 to 9. So I'm, I'm going to be fucked. Wait, you work where? Uh, I work in California. Nice. Oh, I, yeah, I, I got to smoke get a take- shitload of weed after work. For sure, I gotta get it. I gotta get his take on Ferguson. It's just that time. <laughs> it's it Ferguson is. That's time. The truth. That's the truth. <laughs> yeah. What, what do you think? What do you think, King man? Ferguson, man. What? Uh, what's your take? My take on Ferguson. Yeah. Uh, you know, to be honest, <laughs> I really, I, 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 I kind of wish it was in LA because you know, I love, I love a good riot. I've always wanted to be part of a riot. <laughs> So, uh, yes. but yeah, it's a uh, it's a little sticky situation. I don't know how we can't even get indicted. I mean, the guy barely had a scratch on his face. We've seen guys get uh, get you know it, it happens all the time. The guy he okay. acts like he was fearful for his life. Shot the motherfucker twelve times. I don't want to f- refer to him as a motherfucker, but uh, he <laughs> shot the guy uh, twelve times. You know, like how scared can you be to where you just shoot him like a two shots? Should be good enough. He, he shot him like, like, uh, you know, that was some ill intention behind that. So yeah, he <laughs> he emptied the clip pretty much. Yeah, but yeah, um, <laughs> I who doesn't want to write? I I have to agree with you there, man. Were were uh, you you old enough to to uh, be be around during the Rod Rodney King shit going on in L.A.? Rodney King, I'm 20 years old right now, so I was yeah. uh, like, oh. I was barely, I just barely knew what was going on. I wasn't yep. flipping shit. Well, I want. I want to. I've always wanted to, you know, get those little bottles of, like, what do they call them, Motov or some shit. And you just throw them. I just feel like, you know, I. I don't know. I play too much Grand Theft Auto or something. A but Molotov I always wanted to be. A, like, yeah, it's like I. I just. I don't want to like kill anybody. I just want to like break some like looting and shit. Like, why can't we loot anymore? Like, do we need an excuse to riot? We could just like. Yeah. That one right now. If we wanted yeah. to, you know. that PS4 and the Xbox. Yeah, I I uh, exactly. I I went to the University of Florida and we won a national championship in football. Um, I don't know what the statue the statute of limitations is on helping a mob of people flip over a cop car. So I'm not gonna confirm or deny whether I was involved in that. But uh, sometimes you, know, you gotta go with the, the a lot peer of pressure. insane college just drunk as yep. shit kids. It was it was a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> Damn! You see, you guys already have experience. I've never flipped a car before. I've I've always wanted to flip a car. I mean, it looks a lot harder than it probably is. You know, you got eight people with you. You just like rock it back and forth and shit. I just want to yeah. do that. You gotta like, make it flip itself, just, basically. That's what I'm saying. You just like rock it and then it flips. But like yeah. nobody just like you know, no, eight people don't just get together and like flip a car. It has to be a riot uh, yeah, in yeah. order for that to happen and for order for a riot to happen. You know, some fucked up shit's going to happen, which is fucked up in itself because, yep. you know, some kid has to die 
for no reason for uh, people to get wound up. But you know, let's just let's just let's break a little shit. You know. Yeah, the uh, next uh, riot, right. the next big riot, the three of us will meet up and flip a few cop cars. It sounds like a deal. That's what I'm talking about. Hell yeah! The king <laughs> wants to flip some shit. Yo, Only well, the king time I ever got put in handcuffs for inciting a riot. God bless. <laughs> God bless the Austin Police Department. Yo, what is your uh, Twitter so so the uh, listeners can uh, follow you and all that shit? All right, you guys can hit me up at Timberlake Tim P. Not Timberlake, just Timberlake. Like, I'm gonna I'm spell it out for you: T I M B A L A K E Tim P. Please don't ask why. They, uh, my my name is Timberlake. I'm not a Justin Timberlake fanboy. It's a it's a long story in itself. Fuck yeah! Well, you you uh, want to stay on with us and 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 break shit down, or uh, have have you got to get get back to uh, Cali living, smoking that green medicine? <laughs> uh, you know what, guys? I'm gonna have to hit you next Wednesday. I mean, I'm gonna get, I'm getting the munchies a little bit. I'm gonna have to walk down to McDonald's real quick before they close up shops. Sauce uh, you throw a brick through that you know fucking what? window. <laughs> <laughs> through the drive through window. Hell yeah. For sure, for sure. I'm, I'm following you now, dude. <laughs> I know, I just got that shit right now. Right? Cool. Thank you, brothers. Uh, good talking to you. Uh, glad to hear some uh, fellow uh, fans that don't uh, all over uh, Edgar's nuts sack right now. I don't know, I don't get it. I, get, I know he's, he's a good friend and all, but you know, damn, just relax on the on the dude. I'm with you, yeah, you know? that, that fight stunk. I'm just a huge Conor McGregor fan, you know, because I went to UFC 178, and that motherfucker, that basic, that might as well have been Ireland in there. UFC it. 178 was insane. They were chanting his name Popped through the up. fucking prelims. Jesus. From the prelims. Like, when I, I was, like I, I'm the biggest fucking McGregor fanboy in the world, though, but I got a, a fucking... A T-shirt. I got a. I got a Conor McGregor T-shirt. I got his fucking hat that says King on it. I have. I'm rocking the shades. Oh yeah. This mother. This, this Irish motherfucker. He's fucking hilarious. He was drunk off his ass. And <laughs> whenever I would say something like, you know, I, he was like, "Are oh, you a fucking McGregor fan?" I'm like, "Yeah, I'm a McGregor fan. I'm wearing all this shit." And he didn't believe me. <laughs> he said he believed that I was a McGregor fan. I'm like, I'm not gonna buy somebody's merchandise if I'm not a fan of theirs. Like, I'm you're never gonna see me work, rocking any fucking Misha Tate uh, or T-shirt or some shit. So it was just, it was weird. It was always that guy. All in good fun. <laughs> it was oh, yeah, always man. that guy, but it was all in good fun. It was awesome. It was an awesome event. But I was saying, like, just. When McGregor knocked out Dustin Poirier, like myself predicted, I'd like to take a little credit for that. When he knocked out, I ran to the bathroom because I had to fucking piss all the way since the down to the cruise fight. And <laughs> yeah. the, the Irish people, they were fucking dancing and jumping all the way in the hallway. <laughs> I couldn't even make it to the... <laughs> and it was just... They took over the MGM Grand. It was, it was the craziest, craziest thing ever I've ever seen. And I've been He's to so over. UFC 158. Yeah, man, he's, so, he he put himself over so good, man. God bless he him. He did, and it's like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, how does somebody do that? Like, like it's not like WWE, you know, where they're fucking like pushing you and having you crush all these guys. You just saying that you're gonna crush people, and then you go out and do it. It's fucking, it's awesome. That's what Chael Dude, did. The the uh, that's one what thing. Did. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The 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 one thing I love about Connor is he attracts so much hate. Like like he'll he'll yeah. like just just tweet out like, Hey, this is a picture of shoes I just just bought and all the responses Oh you cocky bitch motherfucker, you spin your whole check on shoes. Fuck you, you're going down. It's like what has the guy done to you? Like all he does is talk shit to his opponent and act very boisterous. Exactly. It you isn't like what? he's done anything. Anything like, oh my god! <laughs> you know what? That that's a case of just a mad syndrome. Just when somebody you hate, you want them to lose so damn bad, they yeah. just keep winning, and it just makes you <laughs> mad. Like you get mad. Like you get. Do you ever have that one guy that you hate, 
in the UFC, but he just, like he just keeps doing shit to piss you off. Even at George St. Pierre, like Clay Guida. That's oh my gosh! Thank you very much. Thank you. You just made my night. Fucking GSP. That's one of mine. Yeah. I fucking I wanted Nick Diaz to submit him so badly, and he just fucking <laughs> jabbed him and then hugged him. I'm like, you son of every a bitch. time. And then, oh. Yeah, I was uh, live at the MGM, uh, the MGM for UFC 167, him versus Hendricks, Ooh. and when they read the decision, half of the arena oh, was shit. just like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck did we just see? We just witnessed. It's like if you're just walking down the alleyway and you just see some old lady get mugged. Like, what the fuck? Like, did somebody <laughs> just seriously take that from him? Like, yeah, right. What? <laughs> His, it doesn't. I can't wrap my head around how Johnny Hendricks lost that fight. You know, and I think that Johnny Hendricks got the the Lawler fight right too because I think that they were it was a very close fight. But I think Johnny had, I believe, it was the first and third round or the first and second round, and then Lawler had the third and fourth round. Yeah. And yeah. And the fifth, it was dead even, and that round was pretty even too until Hendricks started rocking Lawler. And then he took him down. That I believe one take that down, yeah. was a more decisive win than GSP getting his ass kicked for three rounds and possibly scoring, outscoring him for the uh, for two. Like, Dude, it was mm-hmm. it was uh, funny. Like, I actually walked out, and and a ton of fans walked out right after they read that GSP won. So I'm in a oh, giant wow. mass of folks walking out of the stadium, and I'm getting texts from the Jew Ross Ross Finkelstein, and Ross is texting me GSP just written retired what the fuck what the fuck and i and i'm like reading it out loud i'm like gsp retired and everyone around me is like what the fuck (laughs) like damn we should not have we should not have stormed out of this shit before the post-fight interviews because we just missed some shit (laughs) well you know (laughs) oh my goodness dude i don't fucking that's why i don't like the walkout before shit like my friends are such douchebags. They didn't give a, sh- a flying shit about Demetrius Johnson. They wanted to <laughs> fucking walk out of that arena so damn fast. Yep. I'm like, at least wait till Donald Cerrone and Al- Eddie Alvarez get done fighting. Like, damn. And as soon as as soon as Demetrius got the finish, uh, they they were just all they were already out. Mm-hmm. I'm like, hold on a second. Wait for me, Uncle. Let me let me get my shit because you know I I want to I want to see the post. I like to see all the shit. You know, I paid fucking two hundred dollars for my ticket. Yeah. I don't want to just fucking, Damn. you know, miss half the shit because you guys want to beat traffic. Or we didn't even, there was no traffic. We were on the fucking monorail, so yeah, that's you know, bullshit, it, I was like, I, I, you know, Demetrius is the most exciting or charismatic guy, but I like to hear, you know, just, I'm just like, I don't have a guy that likes to to hear shit. I listen to, to fucking press conferences and shit. Yeah, I fucking uh, listen to the other man scrums. And yeah. Joe and it's like a respect yeah. thing too, you know. Like, you know, I just yeah, I listen to the Aunt Jimmy show. But Hell yeah, I listen to all that shit. Yeah, that's what I'm talking. About, man. Yeah, but you know, it's uh, I, I'm one of those like diehard fans, like, diehard UFC fans more than anything. But this is Timberlake Ten P, follow him, my man. Follow him on Twitter, people. All right, guys. Yeah, man. Thanks for Take calling it easy, in, buddy. Dude. Yeah, nice yeah, talking yeah. To you. Do it more often. Yeah, we'll uh, uh, hear for sure. hear from. You will be hearing from me. What was that? I I said we'll oh, yeah, hear from you, from yeah, you, you down the road, yeah, buddy. Ah uh, yeah, <laughs> my bad. I've been trying to say that. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll be. Uh, you'll be hearing from me next Monday for sure. Thanks, guys. Hell yeah, man. Hey, later, Get buddy. That Big Mac. Later. It got a little awkward when we tried to let him go, but people, that was one of the calls of the year for 2014. He was cool, Damn. man. Everybody, Timberlake, 10P That's right. on That's Twitter. Right. Straight out of, I, I think he said California. Somewhere. LA, I didn't yeah. Catch the, LA? The LA Shit. area. Oh, that's right, because he wanted to be in the riots. But he, <laughs> Shout out. But the, when the LA riots went down in the 90s, he unfortunately was probably one, years, uh, one year old and... Could not lift a brick. He couldn't lift right a goddamn street. brick. He bricked, or for that matter, throw it through a glass pane window. Um, the uh, topic we we were broaching before we got got that uh, call. Rampage apparently uh, wanting to come back to the UFC, and uh, I don't know if we're gonna broach that topic because we got another caller. People coming from the nine oh five area code. What's going on, man? Thank you. 
Hey, bro, it's Mystery. Yo, that is a voice I uh, recognize. This yeah. is the same guy Holy who made shit. the MMA podcast outro. What the fuck is going on, man? Hey, bro, what's going on, boys? It's blessed to be on the MMA podcast, for sure. What's up, man? I had to call check in, for sure. I just heard the most awkward conversation in 2014 right there, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, yeah, you're, you're fucking part... Part of the inner circle now. You've you've made made the outro. Uh, what's what's going on 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 in your uh, mind? MMA shit. Thank Thanksgiving shit. It's an open floor. Any topic. That's for all you you dudes in America. But I, anything MMA. I was waiting to call in for anything, but I heard all this Connor talk, and my boy Poirier. I still think he's better than Connor McGregor. Ooh. And if you had a chance. <laughs> I'll talk about anything in MMA. I just had to call in. We got the Aunt Jimmy show. has been on a roll. And we got Jake, Corey. Yeah, right, man. Hell yeah. Dude. Hell yeah. Yo, yo. so so uh, Connor fighting for a belt, I guess you don't agree with uh, King calling up saying that, that Connor should step ahead of Frankie Edgar as far as who should be next in line? It's hard to say, man. I've always liked Connor, but I thought for sure his match was Poirier. I feel like Poirier didn't even get a chance to really fight him. But he did stop him. But I just feel it's fucked up because Poirier was ranked. Uh, now he's fighting C- uh, McGregor's fighting Seaver, who wasn't even in the top ten. They announced he's fighting, and then they move him to the tenth spot without fighting against Seaver. And I feel like what they're just feeding him another dude who's not a wrestler, and like he'll be five and zero. Oh, and I don't know. I think he'll do good against Aldo, but it's I don't know, man. It's fucked up. You look at Cub, who had seven fights in a row and didn't get the shot. Like I don't know. I want to see yeah. him sell up. I don't know, boys. I think Hello? Jake got on mute or something. Oh, Sorry yeah. about that. Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm, I'm uh, muted. Yo, I uh, do do want to talk a uh, bit of MMA, but I'm sure all of the uh, listeners are uh, wondering. You know, this is the uh, dude who made the the new MMA podcast outro we played last week. Um, you know, you're uh, rapping. You've you've got like 20 or 30 songs, which are are all like actually. I'm not not just blowing smoke up up. Uh, up your ass they're really good like how did you start rapping i'm sure that's you know that's probably more popular in the southern united states than it is in toronto canada so yeah how how did rapping and all all of that uh shit start up man do, wait do they still call it rapping or is it like i thought last i heard and i don't <laughs> keep up i thought it was spitting hot fire you what hot what do they fire, call bro. Easy, you know, hot fire like dylon uh dylon <laughs> It kind of just came from whatever, man. I've been through some shit out here, and I, I just try to make music that sounds good. No fucking it's typical fucking in a club shooting gun. Like, nobody wants to hear that. And, like, I don't know, man. Just pull from my own experiences, bro. And fucking, I listen to you guys all the time. And the MMA thing, it just came to me. I was drinking, bro. And, hey, man, nothing but love, bro. I fucking, it might have been weird. I don't know any of you dudes, but enough material to pull. Nah, man, it was that. straight. We've... We've we've uh, tweeted back and forth a fucking dozen times. So so like when 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 did did you start you know putting down tracks? Hey man, this, this is probably like a, I'm like 28 now. Um, it's it's been a long time, man. But I finally just kind of like hitting my prime now. It probably like when I was like I don't know maybe 21, man. Even before that, but I just do it for myself, bro. I feel like I'm only getting better, and I don't really care. You know what I mean? So hold up, bong hit. You guys hear that shit? Hell yeah! Oh, yeah. Set it, it off now. like Ferguson. What? What? I, I've been wondering though. Um, what do you actually? Because I'm a, uh, I happen to be a musician myself. I do a little home studio recording and cooking every now and then. What? What do you? What do you use? Are you using like Cubase, a uh, Audition, uh, Pro Tools? What, what are you working with? Hey man, I wish I could have the Pro Tools. I used to go to the studio, but I fucking uh. I got mixed cracks, mixed cracks, mixed. Crafts. I used that before. They're still in business. I, mean, I got program though, brother. I like mixed craft. It was so user friendly. Yeah, man, that's what I'm saying. I bought the full program, and I went and got a good mic, the pop guard, the mic stand. Nice. I'm fucking doing it at home from the fucking condo on the eighth floor, boys. Hell yeah, man! Fuck yeah! Uh, yeah, d- dude. The uh, the outro was fucking awesome. You know your shit. You obviously listen to uh, listen to us fools. Uh, I I laughed my ass off, but like in a good way. Like that that, that was fucking awesome, dude. And hopefully uh, we'll close or play it at some point in this Yo, we're, uh, in this show. 
We're uh, closing every show from here on out with it. Um, Hell yeah. Yo, what is this shit about you all not doing Thanksgiving in Canada? Like, if you're not doing it on Thursday, then what day do Canadians oh, have aside, have set aside to stuff their face with turkey and sleep all day? And, it's like a month before America, man. You guys have it, like, way earlier. We have it right before uh, Halloween. What? Fucking Fuck. You motherfuckers, Christopher Columbus taking over here. You, you guys had to apologize to the Indians earlier, like bef- first, before we did. No Indians. Fucking ayahuasca with Joe Rogan and Dan Hardy. Brother. That's right. That's right. So, do they do the same foods over there? Stuffing, turkey, mashed potatoes, gravy, cranberries, that bullshit? Oh, I was- I'm always giving the chickens a little, the turkeys a little stuffing and extra fucking gravy, bro. Right in their mashed potato. Yo, no, I, 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 I want to hear a Thanksgiving rap at some point. That would be the shit. Canada's <laughs> <laughs> not even like that, man. Like, people get it twisted out there, but like for real, man. Like, uh, yeah, man. It's basically the same shit. It's just for whatever reason, fucking America got that different history and shit. Canada's fucking awesome, man. Toronto's not even as, as uh what you would think it to be, bro. It's like a, a mini New York, and that's not really saying much, but hey, man. It's just, here. it's just like, okay. we think it's really cold, and like, the women are weird. Like, that's the bottom <laughs> line, dude. <laughs> women are weird. The women, they, I don't even want to get started on that. Fuck, man. I'm not saying they're ugly. I mean, I mean, I've seen some hot Canadian bitches. I'm just saying they're weird. Hey, man, weird's an understatement, but fucking few diamonds no. in the rock brother i'm all for it man i'll I'll tap a canadian bitch yeah, i don't i don't, I don't give a damn Some american chicks are fucking looking like joe dirt oh know. yeah the, oh my these God. texas girls are out of their goddamn mind uh and yeah in the midwest you you will catch oh shit i was about to say somebody's name uh anyway yeah word in the street hey, Yo, quick they... question who do you guys think poirier should fight next huh Ooh, um, man, let me look at the featherweights mm. currently. I don't really, yeah, that's that's a uh, decent question, but I, I was Cubs gonna Swanson, chime in. Right? I was gonna chime chime in and say erotic and psychotic are next door neighbors. People, um, looking at the featherweight rankings, uh, shit, Dustin's still six. Maybe a fight against Dennis Bermudez. Uh. <laughs> They both yeah. had a loss. They should. Uh, yeah. Him and Cub Swanson should go at it. I think, man. Uh, him and Cub fought before, right? Cub, Cub beat him. Oh, they yeah. did. Oh, yeah, shit. I'm looking. Dennis and Dustin have not fought yet, and uh, both of them were on pretty good win streaks before their loss. So, so yeah, let's let's uh, book it. Joe Joe Silva Poyer versus Dennis Bermudez. Sounds good, man. Is Dennis even in the top ten or what? He should be. I don't know Dennis is there. seven. Poyer is sixth. Who 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 do you yeah. think he yeah. should fight next? Matt Grice. Yeah, that good. Damn. That's that's that, that's take. a dark that's a dark joke, Ramsey's. But uh yo, yo, let's yo, um before we get back to the rampage, coming back to the UFC thing, they uh riding in Toronto for Michael Brown, I know, no, no, they're going crazy all over in Ferguson. They're they're doing some shit in Denver. I don't know. Is uh, Canada really covering this? Hey man, coming for me. Um, I think it was the, I think it was the dude Bloodstain Lane that told me not to listen to the media or fucking read the newspaper or follow the news, and I try to stick to that, man. Uh, God bless BSL. Hell yeah! I, Shout out. Mention, man. I, of course, I've heard about it, but you know what? I don't care. As cold as it is, I don't care, boys. I really don't care. Yeah. That's 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 probably the uh the 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 best take you you can can have because watching the CNN, Fox News, all this shit, they sensationalize the fuck out of it. So let's get to more important shit. Rampage Jackson saying he's he might come back to the UFC. He desires to come back to to the UFC. Uh, said quote Sometimes you should just stay with the devil you know. Mystery, I'll throw it to you first. Uh, Rampage Jackson, do you think he's gonna come back? Do you want him to come? come back um i sort of want him to come back just because he's a spectacle and he makes every fight a spectacle but in a way it's almost turning into like like a sideshow because i really don't think there's anyone in the top 10 i mean i i 
I think if you make OSP versus Page, OSP knocks his fucking block off. But just for the spectacle that he makes at every fight he's in, I guess I want to see him come back. Hey, man, I was, I was thinking the same thing. OSP probably would beat him, but it's weird, man. You look at Tito and Rampage, they both were coming off, like, losing streaks from the USA. Go to Bellator, they both got a, uh, I think Rampage has three in a row. Uh, Tito has two. But anyway, I feel like if he, if he did come back, then they should throw together a Rampage and Shogun rematch just to, like, you know, Shogun go out on that and Rampage, if he did come back. But I think his contract shit with uh, – is all fucked up because Coker has announced that a revenue and he had, he was living good before. And now I feel like, but I don't even know, man, ranch rampage was kind of fighting bums and King Mo didn't look good when he beat him. But if he did come back, I'd like to see him against Shogun rematch. What do you think about rampage Ramses? Well, uh, contrary. See, this is the problem. Um, rampage can come back and I'm all for it. Because he can move a pay per view, like like uh, I was saying, Frankie Edgar, for instance, can't. Um, so like that's why they're turning like champ. Like uh, that angle isn't even enough for Frankie. But with Rampage, he can come back anytime he wants because of the drama he's already banked against the UFC. People will watch this damn fight just knowing that he doesn't want to be there and talk shit about the UFC. It's curiosity. Um, somehow this idiot has managed to like promote himself well, uh, and I'm amazed and yeah, I'm all for rent. Bring him back. It's, you know, it's just going to be funny watching him like try to like make an excuse and like be like, yeah, I came around to the UFC once again. Uh, this is why I was wrong last night. He's just going to bullshit everybody. And it's going to be that classic rampage bullshit. Like when he like just he's like I'm not making excuses, but uh yeah yeah you know I was shot in the face minutes before the fight and my legs didn't work my knee like I love Rampage he's a character he sells he's interesting um and the UFC's got to get him back from from Bellator they gotta they gotta that'll that'll actually give him a little bit more cred as far as like. Uh, the war goes, the Monday Night Wars, so to speak, between uh, the UFC and Bellator. If they get Rampage back and he starts talking shit on Bellator now, uh, that alone is worth whatever the UFC will have to pay him, and that's the bottom line. Yeah, I I uh I you know like this new look Bellator, but um I don't know the guy's still definitely a draw in the UFC. They got clobbered this year by injuries. They lost a lot of money with big names pulling out. So this is a guy that you can plug into a pay per view. Maybe you know it's not not gonna sell a million buys, but it's gonna help. Um, moving on, we got just just a couple more topics before we get to Ramsey's fight tips and then close it out. Um, not, you know, last week was a really busy week in the UFC. We had a bunch of fight announcements. We had the time is now presser. We had UFC 180 to break down and UFC Austin, <clears throat> pardon me, to uh preview. Uh, not, not much news at all this, this week, but, uh, one of those bits of news that did come down the wire this week was, uh, top UFC lightweight contender Donald Cerrone, who's going to be fighting Miles Jury at UFC 182 on January 2nd at the MGM Grand. Cerrone had some interesting words about Miles Jury, saying, quote, I'm a veteran, like Miles Jury's little motherfucking ass. He's coming. You know, I've been in the game a long time. I'll be goddamned if I'm just going to second guess him and think this little kid is just going to come take my lunch money. It ain't going to ha- happen. Talking about undefeated, sure, I could get my girlfriend to get her un- undefeated to fucking 22-0 and if I wanted to. I want to know the talent he's fought. Has he fought fucking killers? I fought the who's who. Everybody. There's not a top name in the division that I haven't fought yet. And he makes a good point that Jury does have this touted undefeated record, but as far as, you know, your strength is schedule Cerrone has fought so many more people than Jury who yeah is is a lot younger but um a lot of folks think he could be the next big thing um I'm siding with Cerrone here I I think his fight experience is going to play a huge role in the fight and I think he's 
maybe not going to demolish Jury. Like, he's demolished guys prior this year. But uh, I think Cerrone gets the job done. What do you think goes goes down with uh, Cerrone versus Jury at UFC 182, Mystery? Hey, man, it's hard to go against Cerrone, but uh, Miles Jury, man, every time I, I think he's not going to pull it off, he does. Who did he fight last? Uh, Gomi, right? Knocked him out? Uh, I believe so. Let me look that up. That sounds about right. Diego before that, man. I think it was Diego before that, and then Gomi. He finished him early at uh, Macau. It was Ben Carter, I think. But uh, I don't know, man. It's, like you said, like, Cerrone's fought tougher dudes. Uh, Miles Jury's nasty, but I don't know, man. It's going to be a good fight. If I had to put money down, I'm going to go with Cerrone, but I don't know. It's a close fight. Yeah, you know, maybe his his uh, his biggest opponent has been Ally Aquinda, who he lost to uh, in in the tough house of a split decision since entering the UFC. Yeah, he's, he's fought five times, but you know those those names you aren't seeing many top ten guys. Chris Saunders, uh, Michael Johnson, who he fought all the way back in 2012, might be his best opponent because since he's beaten Michael Johnson, he's fought uh, Ramsey Nijum. Kind of a struggling light lightweight uh, Mike Ricci, who he only beat via split decision. Uh, Ricci is in Titan, I think now. Diego Sanchez, he he beat via unanimous decision, and then uh, Takanori Gomi, who he knocked out just a few months ago. Um, Ramsey, do you uh, think think Jury's the real deal, or is Cerrone gonna put him in his place? I hope Miles Jury destroys the legacy. Damn and soul of Donald Cerrone. And why? Uh, I'm going to keep it real. This is honest. Miles Jury does not follow me on Twitter, but he has favorited at least five or six of my tweets. And so uh, guess what? That's five or six more than Donald fucking Cerrone. So uh, fuck that guy. Miles Jury is the real deal. And I'm all for him. I'll actually bet money on the kid. And that's the word on the street. That's right. And uh, like I said, it's a slow week. We only have one more topic to go. And that's uh, TJ Dillashaw versus Dominic Cruz. Apparently, TJ wants the fight in early 2015. Uh, he recently went under the knife to uh, repair damage in his elbow, but was able to remove the splint last week. And he's uh, he's already starting to get, to get back in fight shape, according to his manager, Mike Roberts. Uh, and, yeah, this is, this is the fight at Bantamweight we all want to see. I sort of... Like, I don't know. I want to see Faber versus Dillashaw, and the evil side of me wants to see really bad blood get stirred up there. But Cruz, you know, he was the guy for a long time. And the other guy was Barrow, who Dillashaw has already beaten. So so this is really about legacy. Uh, man, if Cruz gets the belt back, that would be fucking crazy. But Dillashaw is just looking so crisp. I can't pick against him. Like, he... he, he his fight against Hennen Barrow was one of the best single per- performances I've ever seen. And if that Dillashaw steps in with Cruz, I think he steamrolls him. But, dude, Cruz looked really good against Mizugaki in his return. I don't know. This is shaping up to be a really, really fun fight, though. Which which way are you leaning mystery toward uh, the champion TJ Dillashaw or the former champion Dominic Cruz? Fuck, man. Another tight fight, man. I don't even yeah. know. Cruz is so good. And fucking Dillashaw's nasty, man. And I feel like... Fuck, man. I don't even know. Like, uh, Dillashaw's been looking real good. And against Soto, what, he finished him too, right? And Burrell was around. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Easton time- before yeah. that... The last time TJ Dillashaw lost was to Rafael Asuncao, which uh, he he also was working his way closer to a title shot at Bantamweight. Yeah, I think he's got like a six, seven fight win streak, right? Yeah. Yeah, fuck, man. If I had to put money on it, I'd have to take Cruz, man. He's just too uh, well-rounded, man, and like the movement. But it's interesting, man, because uh, Dillashaw is so far and everything. Uh, I don't know, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Cruz, bro. Ramsey's final take of the night. Take it home for us. Well, Dominic Cruz versus TJ Dillashaw. I, I'm gonna love this fight. It is. I do want to say at this, if I had to call it, I'd also say 
Uh, I'd ha- I'd have to repeat basically what the, what a mystery saying, man. I believe that it's a little too close to fucking call. I don't know. Uh, Dominic Cruz's comeback was believable. It was great. It was decisive, of course. You know, he. Uh, but um, you know, they set him up with a really easy opponent. And any time it's like a Japanese fighter, there's always the question of, you know, how much did they pay the guy to roll over? Um, because to them, it's like they're going overseas to fight in pride, you know? You know what I mean? To them. Um, but yeah, at the same time, it, it, Cruz's comeback fight did look believable. I mean, he was he was showing the same footwork like I didn't see anything damaged in him, which was very well, surprising. So I think I I I believe that it'll be a competitive believe. fight. Yeah, I it, it'll it'll be a competitive fight. But um, if TJ Dillashaw is working with Dwayne Bang Ludwig, that's probably gonna be the deciding factor here. I'm sorry, man. That team, I I just they're, they're gonna whoop some ass. They're gonna break down Dominic Cruz back and forth, and they're gonna. They're gonna probably outpoint him, um, and uh, yeah. But without but without Bang Ludwig, uh, I, I I would bet on Cruz. But uh, this one's a no bet for me, man. Too close. Did you want to chime in, Mystery? What was that, bro? Did uh, you want to chime in? I think I heard heard you try and say something, or maybe I'm hallucinating because no, I smoke too much weed. I'm smoking some some of the finest over here. Now I'm said uh, uh, Dominic Cruz looking like Eddie Munster. That's all really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> final final topic. Um, that's not MMA related. I gotta throw it in last minute. But uh, Ramses, I know you and I have similar. Uh, backgrounds in watching pro wrestling. We both watched as little kids, and in the last year or so, we've gotten back into it. Mystery, I don't know what, what your take is on pro pro wrestling, but uh, yo, last uh, last Sunday, I marked out hard as shit when one of my favorite wrestlers as a kid, Sting, he made his re- return. And I know half the, the listeners listening who watch MMA very closely and uh, think pro wrestling's an absolute joke are uh, turning off the podcast, but I don't care, people. Stinger's back. Stinger's back. Mystery, do you watch pro pro wrestling? And if so, what did you think about his comeback? Hey, bro, you must be smoking that Sasquahanna with Sasquahanna weed fucking joke. <laughs> well, well, I always used to fuck with this little okay, heavy, that's but, uh, all I remember is Sting is uh, WCW versus fucking Nitro video game for 64. Uh, yeah. Roof. Hey, man, I, I follow it here and there, but uh, nah, man, I, I'm not clueless, brother. Clu- clueless like Alicia, uh, Alicia Silverstone? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's Hell yeah. Shout bitch. out. <laughs> she, she, she broke my heart. That's um, Susquehanna weed. I've been telling you about that shit. Yeah. <laughs> man he lost his, have you ever seen that that conversation the susquehanna rogan conversation animated the you cartoon invite me to your someone home made you give me the susquehanna weed because i know you're gonna give me that susquehanna <laughs> fucking weed. <laughs> look, look it up look it up on youtube as soon as you're done with this podcast everybody rogan um, gets actually angry at joey diaz did. that shit was hilarious because <laughs> he didn't know what he was talking about <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, look up the Susquehanna Weed cartoon from Rogan on YouTube after this is done. Um, I'm get tired of Susquehanna Weed to drive on the way out here. No kidding, man. He I don't know what Susquehanna is. It's a Fugazi. <laughs> it's a Fugazi. <laughs> Suck it's, a, it's a fucking oh, fake. It's for the week. But what was the last fucking topic? I don't even remember. I got Yo, distracted by Sting. Sting oh, that's coming right. Coming back. That's did you mark out as hard as I did? Uh, I actually wasn't that big of a Sting fan, but yes, I do. I do appreciate his comeback. I know it's epic. Um, it's just the the whole like I was there when the movie The Crow came out, 
And like I saw that before I was ever into wrestling. So to me, Sting was always just ripping off the crow. Um, <laughs> and like, my, yeah, my, my parents like took me to see that movie at least four or five times in the theater. I must have been 10 years old, maybe. And they just trying to fuck you up. <laughs> I think so. Be- yeah, because like that movie starts off with the crow coming back after a violent murder rape scene. Uh, of his girlfriend and and then they anyway um yeah so like sting was always a rip off of the crow to me so i never really respected him fully even as a young boy but he's back now and i do know that you know he 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 is a wrestling legend that was cool but he just reminded me and um and with this the uh, uh according to a report heard by none other than our friend Front Row Brian, the surprise UFC announcement that didn't go down at the time is now press conference. Um, he heard that it was going to be the UFC announcing that CM Punk was going to be uh, fighting MMA and signed to the UFC. Was he being serious? Yeah, yeah, that's that's the rumor he heard. Because uh, the man the. But, the one thing I would say is the UFC really isn't about signing freak shows, even when it's someone as pop- popular as Kembo. Dana James White Tony. wasn't all about it. But yo, I mean, <clears throat> the fact James that it came, Tony. the came that I well, that's that like CM Punk isn't versus a, Randy. CM Punk isn't a legendary fighter, boxer. He's a pro wrestler. But I mean, if this is coming from FRB, I look, <clears throat> look I. I know a lot of people have a lot of preconceived notions about Front Row Brian, but when he says something, I would listen. And then um, I also heard some other speculation, probably fueled by the Front Row Brian a rumor, but uh, it seemed to make sense. If you notice, the uh, UFC has been actually advertising the new WWE 2K15 game. Um, there's a little inside. There's a little inside rumor there that the WWE, that Vince actually screwed the UFC with promises and like OKs and uh, informal handshakes about the CM Punk deal, uh, just to get their commercials aired. And now, and now the deal fell apart. Everything Oof. is a goddamn mess. Uh, we'll see what happens. This is all just rumors and speculation. It's the word on the street, people. You can listen to the word on the street every Thursday, the UMA podcast, every Tuesday, or in this case, Wednesday, because we started late as shit. Uh, before we wrap up, bow up on it and send it out into the internet mystery, where can we find you? What do you hear? What do you say? Hey, boys. Uh, catch me on Twitter, at Mystery Deja. Other than that, uh, nothing really, bro. Nothing really, man. Oh, yeah. Fuck Fuck yeah. fucking highest word on the streets of Canada. God We're damn. all high. Word on the streets of Canada, Texas, Colorado, where the fuck you are. Ramsey's give it to the people. You got to follow me on Twitter, The Ant Jimmy Show, because I am. You heard it tonight. You were witness to it all. I am bringing everybody out there the word on the street. Shout out. Thank you to Dana White, Lorenzo Fertitta the UFC staff and crew and all the fighters at UFC Austin. Um, it was a pleasure hosting you in my city. Let me know if you need anything else. It was nothing but good times. And thank you, Jake, from the MMA podcast. And thank you, Mystery, for the beautiful outro that we're about to hear that you crafted. That's right, and you hear the outro in the background. Happy Thanksgiving, people. Enjoy your friends and family. Call them up. Be thankful. Uh, call them up and tell them to listen to the MMA Podcast. We're at themmapodcast.com. Twitter at the MMA Podcast. We'll catch you next week. We got Joe Schilling. We'll be breaking down UFC 181. 
we gone. Bro, I wanna say John Jones is a hoe, so I think that I'll pick up the phone and dial 213-457-3380. We got hot takes on the stove. You get blood on your clothes if you're sitting in the front row. I throw on my gi and then I lace the hoops. I'll have Gal lying down cause he ain't the truth. And if Alan wasn't a cop, I'd mention you. And shout out to Ross Finkelstein the Jew. Cause according to you, you're an MMA guru A rude biz being lost his hands, count too good If you're a fancy boy, you get a two minute slot Mr. Reed wants a title shot So listen to the MMA podcast Throw a high kick, but I block that Call me T-ass, screaming George, where you at? I'm on the strap But you know that I'll never tap So listen to the MMA podcast Throw a high kick, but I block that Call me BS, screaming in George, where you at? I want the strap. Can you know that I won't tap? Mystery. Uh, the MMA podcast. Most of us just live and breathe this fighting shit. Uh, uh, shut up, Jake. Shut up, Jake.